Hello? Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, hey, Sarah, I got to turn up my volume. Great afternoon. Yes, great evening. Hey, thanks for showing up, Sarah. Oh, my pleasure. I hope I didn't break this. I can hear you great. Uh, and these uh, these speakers are supposed to be good quality. Feels kind of cheesy to me. How <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, Sarah? Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Okay. Ooh. Let me pop up my screen so people know what to expect. Uh, let me see here. Okay. You see my screen okay, sir? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Bob, I hope you're dressed. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but just barely. Oh, geez. <laughs> I don't like someone else know you, Bob. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to I'm gonna have to black my screen out. <laughs> I don't want to pass out. It, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. Uh, as a gag gift for uh, Christmas, my wife got me uh, a banana hammock. Well, you know, the joke's on her. I'm going to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, let's see what time we got here. We got a few minutes. We can chit chat. So, how's everyone's day? Same as yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's getting I boring. Of texts. Okay, I, I got a text. Someone's asking about tax sale overages. You know, I'm going to refer that one to Jim Everett. Um, I, I don't know if Jim's on tonight, but Jim kind of messed around with him a little bit. And um, I don't know, Kristen, are you on? Because um, you, you might want to talk to Jim Everett about that the tax sale overages, that's a guru thing. And uh, at least in South Carolina, I'm not too impressed by him. I could be wrong. Maybe there's people here. What, what, are, what the tax sale overages, what a guru does is he's selling, uh, I forget his, his last name, it's Bob something, I forget his last name. But anyway, he's selling a course for $997 if you buy tonight, okay, tax sale overages. And the idea is after a tax sale, uh, if there is an overage, the person who lost their property to tax sale has money coming back to them that supposedly they don't know about. So what your job is to find that money and then split the, split the overage with them. That's how you make your money. In reality, it's, it's a guru thing. Let's put it that way. Um, person here, Jim, he tried it pretty diligently. And uh, the county notifies the, the sellers to the best of their ability. I mean, the, the people who lost property to the best of their ability that they have an overage coming to them. So if the county notifies them, why do they need somebody to find the overage for them? You know, that, that's one of the issues. But uh, anyway, I will, if Kristen isn't on the call, I'll text her back and uh, let her know personally what I think of that course. Anyway, there's a lot of guru stuff out there they're selling now. You know, real estate investing is hot. People are watching HGTV again and stuff like that. So that's one reason we're having tonight's meeting with uh, a true licensed residential builder as well as a licensed realtor who's doing the business. Um, it's not what you see on HGTV or what the gurus are selling you. Um, it'd be nice to get a little dose of reality. This is stuff I wish I knew when I first started, you know, rehabbing because I, I made good money, but I also lost a lot of money that I shouldn't have lost. So anyway, 
Bob, can you hear me? Yeah. Is this Eddie? No. Oh. Uh, Marcus. Well, hey, hey, Marcus, how you doing? It's Eddie. <laughs> that's about that's about to start sweating here. <laughs> we were. Hey, Sarah. Can Sarah hear me? I, I don't know. I hope I'm sure hope she can hear you. She's almost. Oh, on. yes, she's muted on my thing for some reason. Was she? Okay. Yeah, she's muted. Okay, now yes, I was muted there and didn't even realize I had done that. Great afternoon, Mr. Sabino. You don't let me see here. Now I just got you full screen. Let's get everybody back into the corners. You there? I'm here. Okay. Okay, Sarah. Well, um, well, yeah, Bob will just Bob will take care of it. He'll hand yeah. over that screen sharing later. <laughs> well, actually, if it's okay, so I do want to give a little bit of an intro. Um, yeah, absolutely. A few things happened. Okay, this Please. is the legal shield. Now, in case everyone wasn't aware this is the legal shield part of our pre-meeting presentation if you will uh one reason the one reason i do like to show this is because it is an affordable way to get licensed attorneys on your side uh rather than having to pay them like 250 dollars or per hour or more this is actually very affordable and a few things popped up uh within the past week or so that i'd like to show here the first one is um this showed up in my news feed um mm. <laughs> Apparently, because of COVID nineteen, the uh, they're all of a sudden being lawsuits being thrown around, um, employers being sued by their employees because maybe they tested positive for COVID nineteen. Now the employees are suing the employers for making them work or even allowing them to work. Uh, there's employer employees employers suing their employees for bringing COVID nineteen into the workplace. Another one is employees suing each other, you know. So that's that's one reason. I, I think legal protection, especially in today's day and age, is probably a very wise thing to have, okay. Um, also, I just popped this up. We have a Facebook group um, devoted to real estate deals. Um, and I saw this pop up. I don't know the answer to this, but if this was my issue, I just call my legal shield attorney. It, it's, Merit, it's Merit Webb. Wilson and Caruso, by the way, and I just call them. And because part of my, I, I have a legal shield protect myself and my business, well, my house flipping business for $35 a month. And all I have to do is just pick up the phone and ask them this specifically. Okay. I'd have to say, okay, there's a, there's a mobile home stretched across two properties. Uh, can one person evict the mobile home from his land? Okay, that's the short story. I don't know the answer. If this was my issue, I'd just call my legal shield attorney for it, okay? And it's it's very affordable. But anyway, let me introduce our legal shield presenter, okay? She's going to know a lot better than me, which, by the way, I'm sorry about this, Sarah. I forgot you were, you were recently promoted to lead regional director. Okay, I got to correct that for the next meeting. It's all good. Please, folks, please ignore that. Sarah is now legal shield the regional director, okay? Uh, Sarah was formerly trained in business administration and accounting. She's a former manager at Bell South. She's been with Legal Shield since 1998, and she regularly trains using Legal Shield attorneys and ID protection services. And Sarah especially is in the small business and employee benefits area, okay? Um, Sarah, if it's okay, I'm gonna switch screen sharing to you. A short story, she, she pretty much knows what she's talking about. Um, <laughs> Let me, uh, Thank you. okay, let me see here, Sarah, make sure I'm not, uh, okay, oh, here we go. I'm going to change, okay, you're now the host, okay. Okay. Can you see how to share your screen uh, there? Uh, this will stop, uh, okay, yes, it's going to stop you, it'll allow me to start. And then I'll turn it back over to you. Um, let me know if you can see my screen at the moment. Yes, I can. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, um, family, I, I just thank you so much for allowing me to visit this afternoon. And I'm always excited. I think this is my fourth Zoom today and my last one. And I'm, I'm just truly more excited here because 
this is one today where all of you are entrepreneurs, in my opinion. Um, and Bob, he has just been so passionate with, you know, trying to get the word out to those that he is in communication with, not just the, Mid the Re Midlands Rio group, but others. That's just Bob DNA. He's always helping. And if any of you know him, you know that. And so it was truly exciting when we decided to do a partnership and help get this information out. It may or may not be for you, but we know you could benefit tremendously. And I'm pretty much the mouthpiece for Midlands Rhea. Uh, we work together and uh, Bob has a website there. So as I go through this, truly, truly know that this is just an overview. Uh, my name and number is at the end. And of course I can give it to you now, 803-622-5334. This is all I do. So I'm really, available to those who have questions because we don't want you signing up or enrolling for something that you don't fully understand. Unlike a lot of other protections out there, this is one through knowledge, we want you to use it. Uh, you know, State Farm, Allstate, others, they don't really want you calling in with a claim. Legal Shield, unlike others, they want you to utilize it because that allow us to help protect you providing peace of mind protection and security. So I'm basically going to highlight the services, take my number, feel free to give me a call. I'm right here in Columbia, South Carolina, for those of you who are nearby. And the beauty is we work with families all over North America. So that's huge as well. Uh, we don't have restriction, territory restriction. So as a small business owner, just a few facts here, um, being respectful of your time, checking my time here. Nearly, we know for a fact, and this is statistical uh, information, nearly 60% of small business owners who said they experienced a legal event in the past two years report not hiring an attorney um, to help them. And it was because of cost. I too am a small business owner. Prior to Legal Shield at Bell South, I still had my own business on the side, you know, there. So I was a business owner. And we know sometimes you run into situations where the, the access to legal counsel would be of tremendous value. But we think about, okay, it's a small issue. Uh, they only owe me an extra hundred dollars or it's a contract that might need reviewing. I don't know, I'ma just, the, it worked for the last client. I'ma just use this one. And because you have to check sometime your bank account before you check your rights, we just say, forget it. So we're keeping business owners from doing that tap the app, you have access. Um, owners reported spending an average of $7,600 in legal expenses per year. You'll be amazed at what many of our small business owners run into. They have the same issues as big businesses. It's just, unfortunately, many of us don't have the deep pockets. So that being the case, a lot of losses can come into the picture. As a business owner, just ask yourself, uh, for those of you who are on the line with employees, and if it's where you don't have employees, you probably know someone who, you know, have employees. Well, what about hiring and firing employees? Uh, that, yes, you say, okay, just hiring and firing. Well, depending on the language there in the application or how that person is terminated, it could turn into a legal issue. Um, what about debt collection issues? Uh, we all probably have been there, done that at one point or another. I've been in a situation where you just thought the advice of a legal uh, situation might be useful. Um, had a young lady to call me about two months now. She was referred to me. She leased a, a facility. It's leaking the floor, pull back the carpet to replace and discover that uh, the floor is deteriorating. Different things, the AC was not working at the time when she called. Those are issues, especially when the person has not come forward with rectifying the situation and it could go either way. Uh, what about have been in a dispute with a, a vendor? So that's what we're looking at. I've held many lunch and learns at my office and I'm sharing with you, we all know we are certainly in some uncertain times right about now. Prior to COVID, when I would host a lunch and learn or met with business professionals such as yourself, we talked about top issues. Basically, debt collection, contract review, document review, you know, things of that nature, tax audits, employee confidentiality issues. Well, 
that was top of the mind at that time. But what about now since COVID? It's a no shift. It's a whole brand new element out there. So we're looking at if it's debt collection related, well, the question is, can I, should I send a collection letter? Can I, should I uh, report that credit to a repository? What about contract review with suppliers and vendors? You know, can you be responsible for a breach? What if you were in the middle of a contract and COVID just turned everything upside down? What are your rights? What are the other person rights? Well, where do you get those answers? Well, just imagine being able to tap an app on your phone, call your law firm and not have to spend your time, energy, uh, communicating, having conversation to no avail. Um, so what about document review? There are so many new governances and legislations right now. What do they really mean? Uh, we, even the scams, we saw what Bob had there at the very beginning, uh, even with the employee employer issues. There are a lot of different things out there now. So with COVID, I'm not going through all of this. We can, uh, I'll refer you to our Midlands RIA website so that you can even go there and email or text me or Bob. We can send you a real-time live COVID-19 resource library that our attorneys have put together. You're under no obligation. They have questions there pertaining to business owners, questions they are pertaining to uh, families and individuals. You're not having to wonder, is this, what about that? You can just tap the app and call. So you can see those of you who are viewing the screen, as Bob said, by COVID testing, you know, OSHA, some of you, I don't know if you have employees, but if they are now working remotely, what liability issues exist? What concerns are there? You know, what if identity theft took place and now one could allege that it came as a result of that employee now working from home, security, all of that, so many different things. Uh, we have all of these new uh, programs out there from the PPP to EIDL, the SBA, uh, SBA debt relief, all of that. Do we know exactly how all that works? And is it where maybe you could have gotten funds from one and because of how they were allocated, you now have gotten yourself into a legal issue. So again, call your law firm to get clarification on that. And with Legal Shield, all we're doing is uh, having it where middle income working Americans can have affordable access. That's what it's, what it's about because the average person doesn't care or some may not be in a position to pay two to three hundred dollars an hour, billable hours, to have certain things um, corrected. So that's all we are about, basically. We have three different tiers, and I'm more than happy to review those with any of you interested. On a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, there's a small business, 10, 50, 100. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean the number of employees you have per se, but a lot of it has to do with the level of protection, the level of your need. So just say for instance, uh, someone with high debt collection issues and high liability issues, trial defense, our small biz 50 might be the most appropriate plan for you. So I like to just consult with uh, those that are interested, explain so that you are not, you know, enrolling in a plan that's providing you too much or too little protection but we can protect you as long as you have less than 100 employees. Home business supplements. So many of you are on the phone um, don't have really many employees. Many of you may just have you, might have a spouse or a family member that work with you. So you could be eligible for our home business supplement. Just imagine for $9.95 a month, you can have access as it relates to your business. They are contract review, document review, debt collection letters written on your behalf for as low as $10 a month added to your family coverage. I mean, I, I can't, <laughs> Bob and I have gone and gotten ice cream and uh, lattes and it costs more than that for the two of us. It's almost that much for one. I mean, but that's what you're looking at. So we are providing that umbrella of protection a write-off and affordable at the same time. And imagine that same $9.95 there access for your business is also providing you Schedule C and Schedule E 
protection if you audit it. I mean, that is huge, family. Uh, I mean, that you just, just doesn't get any better than that. Uh, as a matter of fact, if depending, I, mean, I would love to know who your tax preparer is um, to help her help more of her business clients. Um, again, on the personal side, there are a lot of COVID-related issues as it relates to school and all the, gosh, different things with the children now, how all that is going with parents. Many of them could have questions. What about prepaying for dorms and things of that nature? The child not, or well, young adult that is not returning. So the list goes on and on. And um, the state planning piece I have done over the weekend, I think I did four or five will workshops because many families, they don't have those documents in place. We provide you all of your documents. Just imagine going home tonight and on your sofa from the comfort of your home, you're able to start your will. 70% of North Americans do not have a current will, yet all of us on the phone have worked hard for what we have in place. And I encourage you, whether it's legal shield or not, don't allow that to just go down the drain, go into probate and not have your wishes honored. So again, what do we, produce? we do? We provide your living will, a last will and testament, healthcare power of attorney, durable power of attorney, all of those documents for as little as $24.95. If you can't see the screen, just write it down, $24.95. And Bob can provide you the link to download the app so it'll look just like what you see there. Um, from tapping that app, you are now talking with your law firm, AV Rated, here in South Carolina. What if it's an issue across state lines? Tap the app, you are now connected to uh, legal counsel in those other states, whether you're traveling or have transactions across state lines. We all have attorney friends, but they may not be the best one to handle our situation uh, because of privacy, or it may be where they don't practice that discipline. So that's why we're having so much success. Our uh, memberships are up 30 plus percent um, since April. I mean, and it's going up month over month. So for that same $24.95, you're looking at unlimited telephone consultation, contract review, document review, personal IRS audit representation, civil and trial defense. Uh, we even can cover uncontested divorce, adoption, separate, separation, name change, all of that for that same $24.95. Now there is a 20, a 90 day wait period for that uh, particular category, but so what? I mean, look at what you're saving there. Um, also, if you were to get a speeding ticket, uh, true, I'm not doing a whole lot of traveling right now and many of you may not as well, but what if you and or that significant other, a spouse or child, were to receive a ticket and you could have it where you tap, take a picture, it goes to the law firm, and now they're looking at how they possibly can negotiate your points, negotiate your fine. Have I used that category? Absolutely. And I was surely ecstatic because four points would have taken my insurance up and to the right, uh, that ticket I received there in Mer Mer North Myrtle Beach, Highway 17, that's where I was, somewhere going around a curve. So anyway, I was ecstatic. So all of that is part of that $24.95. And emergency access. We are truly in some uncertain times with a lot going on. Imagine the peace of mind, protection, and security there, knowing that in the event you are pulled over or there's a knock on your door at your office and there is someone of authority and they want to question you, detain you, interview you. Just imagine being able to call and have an attorney speaker phone 365 24-7. That's huge. So that's part of that 2495. We have other member discounts on pre-existing matters, uh, DUI, other things there. We can talk more about that one-on-one. -on -one. We are proud to say that we provide the most robust privacy management ID Shield coverage to date in the country. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were awarded the uh, 2020 Cybersecurity Award back in February this year. We don't just monitor your credit, it's the U Factor, because I know for a fact 
if there was criminal activity or something negative in my name, I would not be able to do another presentation. I have to go through a background check. Same with Bob. And I do believe 99.99% .99 of you on the phone. Um, identity theft is up and to the right now because of all that's going on with COVID. Uh, people are drawing others unemployment and yet they are out there, they are gainfully employed. Um, so they are applying for some of these loans and that person has not even, that business owner has not even applied. Those are some serious ramifications that's going on. So we are proud to say that we monitor and protect and restore the U factor. Uh, passport, driver's license, dark web, all of that is part of that coverage, your 401k, loans, uh, subprime, you name it, buy here, pay here, investments, all your social media out there, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of that, it, reputation, score, management, that's what we are about. So that's part of that uh, coverage that we're offering our business owners and why it's so important now more than ever to look at what do I have in place. If you want me to do a comparison, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I'm not, you know, opposed to that. And all of this comes with a $1 million guarantee. We have commercial driver's plan. Just keep that in mind. I'm sure you know of some individuals who are falling under commercial drivers. Many immediately think of the tractor trailer, 18 wheelers. No, not necessarily. There are so many people, side hustles, they are Papa John delivery, Pizza Hut delivery. You know, when that vehicle is income producing, it can make a difference on the outcome given a situation. So we can talk with you and our colleagues about that. We have a gun owner's plan carrier. It, you know, carrier doesn't mean a bad person. You need to be a carrier almost these days just to protect yourself. And of course, we have the most robust uh, gun owners plan um, in the marketplace again. And that's coming from a lot of the investigators and uh, deputies that I work with. Uh, because again, you can be a carrier, but what if you're traveling and you're across state lines and they have a whole different set of issues? Or what if you were to just merely point the weapon uh, for your own uh, protection there? How does that affect you? We have perks to help reduce your expense there. Uh, Bob and I, we use our perks and I'm gonna be honest, I could go on and on and on with the savings there, but mine is so great until literally my membership is pretty much at no cost based on my savings. So as you can see, just a simple bundling of just your, if you just looked at the legal plan and the home business supplement as a start point, that's only $34.95 a month, $34.90 a month. And then, of course, you can look at the ID Shield uh, Individual or Tribe Bureau, which is so highly recommended. And we all know all of that is a business expense. So, yes, uh, I'm Sarah Mitchell, have been with Legal Shield since 1998. I am one of the, uh, well, I'm the only executive director here in Columbia, South Carolina, and the regional director now for this area and a few outline areas. And all that means too is that just helping individuals. Bob is part of our management team here um, because he has already established the fact that he's helping individuals. Currently Legal Shield um, is protecting over 4.4 million lives. And we've been around since 1972. Uh, we're proud to say that our attorneys receive approximately 2 million requests annually nationwide we're in Canada and have opened up the UK as it relates to Legal Shield concerns. And why is that? Members now can be at a stop sign and tap the app and call their law firm and not have to worry about billable hours just like that. Uh, their attorneys reported that within the last five years, they uh, re reported uh, recovering or saving our members $252 million. I mean, I could go on with so many stories, but due to time constraints, I don't, I don't have that liberty right here, but please reach out, Midlands Rhea, the website, or me, Bob, can uh, provide you additional information. As you can see, I'm Sarah Mitchell here, 803-622-5334. If nothing else, please get, allow us to send you the COVID resource library. We have videos that we can send you on our small business plan, the home business supplement, ID Shield, 
anything that I covered tonight, we can send you a video and a brochure of the collateral to help you make an informed decision. Uh, so again, look at how you can protect your business, your clients, and your family. And again, I am ever so appreciative of your time tonight. And thank you so much, Bob. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn it back over to you. Hey, thanks, Sarah. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Okay, it's funny you mentioned the member perks. Uh, Linda actually won a bid for a Jim Shore bird bath. So we have to go pick it up in Tennessee. So I'm going to use the member oh. perks to save on a hotel room. You I'm bet. Make it a two day trip. So, yes. Uh, it's funny you say that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I've saved many times hotel, airfare as well, and rental oh, yeah. car. Yes. Oh, yeah. So thanks, Bob. Well, th thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. Okay, let me, uh, oops. Sarah, did you disable your screen sharing by any chance? Um, gosh, I want to think I did, Bob. So what do I do? Actually, it's okay. Let, let me take back the host from you. Please, yes. Let me see how to do that here. Uh, you know, I had this problem last time. You think I'd <laughs> okay. know by now. All right, I'm looking at self. Edit, hmm, rename. Oh, Bob. Okay, come on, let's see. I'm sorry, folks, technical difficulties. <laughs> Bob, you're Asian. We shouldn't be having this. No, hey, we just make the equipment. We don't use it. Okay. <laughs> uh, let me. Uh, okay, I'm going to Bob. One second to say make host. Yeah, can you make me the host? Uh, I think that. Oh, should okay. Have Thanks, Sarah. That, that care. Care. Okay. Yeah, okay. Teamwork. Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, let me. Uh, okay. You're the host. Bob. Doing. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks again, Sarah. I appreciate it. Um, okay, folks, uh, as, as we mentioned before, this is the Midlands RIA monthly meeting. We meet every second Monday of the month. Ideally, we'd be meeting in person, but because of COVID-19, we're kind of restricted to meeting online for now, which I guess isn't such a bad thing, but uh, preferably in person would be the better way to meet. Uh, okay, liability disclosure. Um, anything you hear or see or speak to anybody in the Midlands region, unless they're a licensed attorney. Sometimes we have licensed attorneys or I think next month we're gonna have a CPA come and talk about real estate taxes some, but uh, unless they're actually licensed or qualified to advise somebody on it, anything you hear at our meetings or see at our meetings is strictly experience of others. So if you question the financial or legal wisdom of anything you see or hear at our meetings, please seek qualified help because I'm supposed to just say we're technically not it, okay? But we can tell you what's worked for us and what has not worked for us, okay? From personal experiences. Okay, a few things. We, we established some goals for 2020 and they're gonna go right into 2021. Um, nationwide, it seems this has been going on for I don't know how long. Out of the people, the common folk like us who get into real estate investing, especially the creative ways, only about 3% nationwide ever do even a single deal. Now, I think in Columbia, it's actually higher. I'm getting, I'm hearing numbers close to maybe 10%. That's still kind of low, okay? Now, our goal as a RE is to drastically increase that, okay? I think because we're mainly an educational organization. Um, we want to give more workshops and now, this was Carlos's idea. I said more and better subgroups, and he said change it to cartels. So he said it sounds uh, it sounds more, uh, you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not I'm not sure I'm going to keep that. Could have a negative connotation too. Now I suggest you be wary of expensive coaching programs on your credit cards or your credit. Okay, the gurus come to town. There's even some local gurus here. They insist they have like a five thousand, ten thousand, twenty-five thousand dollar coaching program, and uh, they say that's okay. Put it on credit, your credit cards or whatever. You just do a deal or two, and you can pay it off. Well, remember that three percent statistic I told you. Okay, if you happen to be one of the ninety-seven percent who never do a deal, okay, then you're still stuck with the debt. The guru got their money. Okay, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to learn this business. You do have to put in the work though, okay? I suggest you first earn the money, maybe a couple wholesales or a couple subject twos or something. And, and then you, if you still wanna go into an expensive coaching program, use that money to get into it. That way you're not saddled with the debt, 
Okay. And if you never do a deal while in the process of learning how to do this business, you know, maybe, maybe your priorities are elsewhere. Okay. I'm not saying this is a difficult business to do, but it does take some tenacity. Okay. Our goal this year was to increase success rate affordably, underlined affordably to at least 50%. Okay. And at the, in December, I'm going to kind of take like a straw poll and see who's actually been able to do a deal who started new. Okay. For beginners, we'd like to get you up and running independently from anyone else as soon as possible. We'd love to have you in Midlands Ria as annual members year after year after year, but we know situations change. You move out of state or maybe you just decide you don't need a RIA anymore, but ultimately we want to get you up and running, whether you need a RIA, whether it be us or anybody else or not. Okay. For the advanced investors, should you decide you want to stay with Midlands RIA? Okay. We want to provide the best continuing resources possible. Okay. And we get, we do that by getting out there and doing it. Okay. Um, that's, that's the only way you can really do it. Like for example, I saw the city of Columbia recently put out pretty strict rental penalty points, penalties for your tenants actually violating certain ordinances, not the landlord, the tenants, which can render the property unrentable. I have one property in the city of Columbia. I know not to buy any more there. Okay. That's my personal opinion. If you're buying and renting in the city of Columbia and you're happy with it, more power to you. That's just not my cup of tea. Now, why the low success rate in the way we get into real estate investing? Okay. As I mentioned before, this is not a difficult business, but I think it's because it's too easy to get in and too easy to get back out. It's easy to do certain tasks and it's easy to not do certain tasks. Okay. It takes, it takes some discipline. Okay. And as you can see here, if you practice a few simple disciplines every day over a long period of time, you'll ultimately see success, okay? But if you keep on making errors in judgment and keep on repeating those errors or you're inconsistent, you're gonna see failure. And you can see along here, failure and success travel along the same timeline, you know? So you can't tell them apart initially until one day, hey, boom, you get success. I, I know a lot of people, myself included, you know, my first wholesale deal, it actually, from the time I first started, you know, real estate investing, it actually took me close to two years to do my first wholesale deal. Okay. And I finally did. And all next thing you know, there's deals everywhere. Okay. And you get that mindset. Now I could have easily quit before then, in which case I'd still be working on the Savannah River site as a lowly research engineer, you know, but that's, I'm glad I didn't. Okay. How does a good clever association help? A good club or association, whether it's ours or anyone else's, because there are, as I mentioned before, okay, there's several good ones around here as well. Uh, they'll offer an abundance of resources. They'll provide great networking. They'll give the best training possible. And they will always seek to improve and adapt, which we're actually really big on. And they'll learn and teach best practices for local investing. Okay, that's what the national gurus cannot do. They cannot tell you how to locally invest. I should say the best way to do so. Like the, the national gurus who come to Columbia and sell their coat, you know, three day courses and then the coaching calls and whatnot. They don't know the, you know, they don't know the ordinances in Columbia and the restrictions on rentals and stuff, you know, but we do. All right. Annual member benefits. Now there, I'm going to go over some of this stuff, but I will give you, I'll, I'll tell you how much it is, but I'll also give you a little bit of a warning. Okay. Uh, Annual members, Midlands RIA will get national, will get discounts to national vendors and supply houses, discounts to Midlands RIA trainings and workshops. And if it's a training within Midlands RIA itself, we like to give that free to the members, okay? If it's a training held by one of our very few outside speakers, we don't have any control over that, okay? But a training by Midlands RIA, we give free to the members, okay? And to non-members, non-annual members, we charge like a nominal fee. Uh, no door fee at general meetings. Obviously, these meetings be on, being online now, there's really no charge for the online meetings at this point. But when we start meeting in person, there's usually a $20 door charge for non-members. Uh, access to the members area with local cash buyers, uh, documents, videos, and other resources. I have contracts, uh, at least the contracts that have worked for me and whatnot. Um, low, uh, limited power of attorney, things like that. Close guidance for deals. That's for Midlands Rio only. That's not a national benefit, okay? And we have several of our members who are willing to act now. 
we're like a library. I don't like to use, I don't like to hear mentor or coach being thrown about. Oh yeah, I go, join them for a mentoring program. We're reference librarians, okay? If you've ever gone to the Richmond Library down on Assembly Street, the main one, that's one of the best libraries in the nation. Those reference librarians are incredible, okay? I'd like to think that we're trying to emulate them and we're just reference librarians, okay? Uh, that's why I'm reluctant to hear, oh yeah, there's coaches at Midlands Ria, okay? Um, and, and some more benefits that hopefully, you know, you'll discover if you become a member. We're always looking for suggestions on how to improve, okay? If you have workshop suggestions, uh, topics, subgroups, or in, as Carlos would say, cartels, okay? We'd love to hear, you know, how we can improve on this stuff, okay? We're always open. If we can improve it, then, you know, we want to implement your suggestions. Okay, if now we are on the major social media channels, uh, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, of course, Instagram. However, if nothing else, okay, at least get into our Facebook group. Now, I hope you're a member of Facebook, okay? You know, some people don't like Facebook, but that's where the people are, okay? And if you go to this link here, this redirects to our Facebook group. Now, there's an easier way to get to that Facebook group. It's the Midlands Ria Money Mastermind. That's where a lot of deals are being flipped right now. So we hope you join there, if nothing else. Okay, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be a paid annual member to join that either. Um, now, this is where the cash buyers list is. Okay, this cash buyers list. If if you log in and click the cash buyers list, you'll see over 50 cash buy proven cash buyers with their phone numbers. Now, if you if you do log in, you know, please don't call them just to, you know, say, hey, are you a cash buyer? Okay, bring them a deal. There's some people in the chat. Okay, James Hardy saying, sorry, I'm late. Kristen saying, reference librarians. And someone saying, if we have cartels, I want matching jackets. Okay, okay, we'll have matching jackets. Okay, <laughs> um, okay now, as I mentioned before, we meet every second Monday of the month. Now, there are some RIAs out there that are free to the members, okay? At least one of them charges sponsors to pay their expenses. And I, I considered the possibility of doing that, and I thought about it. If we have a sponsor, you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm going to use a name. I, I love Lowe's, but I'm going to just use them as an example. Let's say, for example, Lowe's sponsors Midlands RIA, and they pay a fee to do so. If Lowe's turns bad, it's kind of hard to say to the sponsor, hey, yeah, you paid us, but we're still not going to promote your services or products, okay? If we have the members pay, which is the way we decide to go, and a sponsor turns bad or is bad, then we can immediately kind of punt them, okay? So we tried to make it affordable. So for a single person, it's $125 a year. For a couple, it's $200 a year. Now, there's something called Reabux credits that can be applied to that. And that's things like if you bring a new guest to a meeting, um, that's $5 credit towards a membership or a course or a training or something, okay? And if that new member signs up, I mean, if that new guest signs up as an annual member, there's another 20 rear bucks, you know, stuff like that, okay? I think somewhere we have a list of how rear bucks can be earned. But anyway, before now, as much as, you know, as much as we have to cover our expenses before you, decide you want to pay, become an annual member of our association, check out the free ones first. You may be able to get the knowledge and information you need to be successful without paying a penny to us, okay? So please check out the free ones first, okay? I hate that I, I even have to charge this, but, you know, anyway. So if you do join the, I want to do my darndest to make sure you get your money's worth, okay? The first thing we do is we hold three webinars uh, private webinars. This is at your convenience, okay? It's not like a whole bunch of people. And uh, the first one covers marketing, how to find deals. The second one uh, is how is cash purchases, basically cash wholesaling and rehabbing. And the third one is the fun one. It's the creative financing, subject to sandwich lease options and stuff like that, okay? So for the members, okay, I'll definitely want to schedule three webinars with you. Each one's about an hour and a half long an hour and a half, uh, maybe give or take, okay, depending how many questions you have and how in-depth we go into some of the topics. Okay, this is, now if you could check the calendar of events on a regular basis, I want to show you all something here, okay. 
Uh, we initially, until this month, we hadn't had a whole lot on the calendar because a lot of things have been shut down. Um, this month, what we'd been doing is, uh, here, let me, uh, well, okay, well, anyway, if you could, <laughs> I, I was trying to get our website up, but apparently that's not the easiest thing to do. Um, Okay, apparently it's not going to work. Anyway, if you check our calendar of events, okay, you'll see we have some events that might be of interest to you. For example, normally we promote a couple of the other RIAs, but they're not meeting. Now, there is one that's meeting on September 25th. It's the Ladies Business Networking RIA. Fickner Services is going to talk about kitchen and bathroom remodels, okay? You know, when you're selling retail houses, one of the primary places to really put a lot of attention into are the kitchens and the bathrooms. Okay. So if you could please check regularly the calendar of events at our page, midlandsria.com and then click the calendar of events and you'll see some events that might be of interest to you. Okay. And hopefully as the pandemic slowly goes away, we'll have more and more events that might be of interest to you there. Okay. Okay. Tonight's interview subject is on, um, proper ways to vet contractors and manage them. Um, now, when I first started rehabbing, there's some rules I picked up from the gurus who sold their rehab stuff, okay? Because I'd never done a rehab in my life, okay? Um, and you can have a choice. You can choose good contractors and learn how to manage them properly so you make a lot of money when you sell a rehabbed house or you can try to save money up front and get fake contractors who do bad work or no work and you lose a lot of money. Um, I had a house down in Aiken on Union Street. A contractor took me for $35,000 because I was stupid. Okay. Um, I violated almost every rule in the book. So now I've, I've, that, that house did cost me a lot of money. I still hold on to it as a rental now, by the way. You weren't stupid. You just trusted the wrong guy. Yeah, exactly. And this is why I asked you to be on, Eddie, to show us how, how could I vet this knucklehead, okay? Uh, anyway, so tonight we have Eddie Sabina and Blair Kobliski, okay? Eddie has been a licensed residential builder since 1998. Now, Eddie was actually started out as a painter in 1993, I believe. Um, Correct. Okay, and... Uh, Along the way there, apparently the partner who taught him how to frame told him, get your own license. Okay, he's been a builder, a residential builder since 1998. And no, he's also no, a licensed building, but I didn't get my license. I'm going to correct you. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Until 2012. Oh, okay, 2012? Okay. But I've been, yeah, Latimer Builders, Don and Rick <laughs> were the ones that taught me. Okay. Okay. My mistake. I'm sorry, Eddie. Absolutely. So you got your license in 2012. Okay. Yes, sir. But I've been, I've been running with those guys and that's where you get your experience. You got to run with hey, people who know what they're doing. Don and Rick Latimer can build houses from the ground up themselves. They don't even need some, but they know all aspects of it, which that's the best place to learn. Okay, that, that's kind of an honesty thing too. Okay, see Eddie, Eddie didn't have to volunteer that. That was my mistake. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, here, let me, uh, Eddie, let me uh, shut off everyone's speakers here. And I'll unmute you and Blair. Okay. Now, everyone is allowed to unmute themselves because this is going to be kind of informal in that uh, if you have a question, just go ahead and just ask away. Okay. I'm going to unmute Eddie. Uh, did I get you, Eddie? Uh, I'm going to unmute Can you hear Blair. me now? Yeah, yeah. Is uh, that you, Eddie? Yes. Okay, let me, where's Blair? Is Blair on? I hope Blair's on. Uh, I see a bunch of people. I don't see Blair. Well, okay. I did tell her 7.45. Did I? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Well, she got about a minute then. She'll be there in a minute. <laughs> okay. Well, Eddie, if it's okay, could you tell us a little bit about yourself while we're waiting for Blair? And I'll get Blair's background too. Well, I started, I got out of the military in 93 and I took a job painting, uh, 
for a company and I quickly realized I wanted to do it, you know, on my own because this company, they didn't know what they were doing basically. And I had enough know-how from the military to realize they weren't following the manufacturer's instruction on the paint, the material, you know, paint's a chemical compound. You know, when you see people applying something in a manner that the can tells you this is how you do it and they're doing the complete opposite, I don't want to learn from them. So I kind of went on my own and I started, that's when I met up with Rick and Don Latimer and I started painting their houses. And the relationship grew with Don. Uh, then we started doing some remodeling on the side for some interior designers. I was doing a lot of painting for designers and they wanted a good trim man, a good uh, a remodeler. They needed a good one because they couldn't find one. Well, that's when I kind of got Don to cross over and go to that side with me for a while. We spent 10 years there, uh, up and down in Shandon Forest Acres working for Epp Interiors. She kept us that busy. But uh, as time went on, you know, Don had the builder's license, so I didn't see a need to have one. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but he taught me in the get. He said, no, you need to get your own. So I said, okay, fine. And I'm glad I did because it taught me a lot that Don never did as far as the publications. Because there's so many publications and you have to know where to go to look for the information. Uh, Don's been doing this since the 70s, him and his brother. So it's all in their head. But somebody like me, I don't have that much knowledge, but I do know where to go get it. And over the years, I built that up since 2012. The more you do, the more experience you get. But I want to do it right. A lot of people out there are doing stuff, and it's not right. That's why most of them don't pull permits. You know, I'd say 90% of people out there doing rehabs and uh, doing flips and doing remodeling, they don't even pull the right permits. Uh, and that's sad because it doesn't protect the client. Uh, I believe in permits because, hey, I'm required to. Uh, if not, they can take my license for, you know, doing permitted work without a permit. That's actually uh, an offense. But also, it's a secondary way where the, the city or the county will come in and inspect your work to make sure it's up to par. And if it's not, they'll have you redo it. So to me, it protects the client. So I just don't know why a lot of people don't pull it, but that, that's basic my history. I love construction. I have a passion about it. I like to do it right. Uh, you know, people who know me know I, I, I like to do it right. I don't want to use cheap products. Cheap products don't really work. I'll tell you why. They're harder to work with, for one. So you lose on the labor side when you start using the cheap products, even paint. Uh, good products, a, a good beginning is a good ending. I don't know if that makes sense, Bob. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I've sensed that. I felt it. I felt the pain. Can Blair hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, now I can, Blair. Oh, that's uh, great. Okay, cool. I figured it out. I had something else on mute. I'm like, I'm here, guys. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you on, Blair. Um, okay, Eddie, Eddie, are you okay with your background? Can we let Blair on? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Blair's a real estate investor and house rehabber. She's also a licensed real estate agent and realtor. Okay. Um, now Blair's relatively newer to the rehab business, but she's, she learns quick. Apparently she's been involved in construction pretty much all her life, just officially rehabbing as of recent. Okay. Um, <laughs> now Blair lives up in the Northeast part of Columbia, Sand Hills, if you will, the Sand Hills area. And, um, you know, it just occurred to me, some people, especially from like Blythewood, Elgin, they come in all the way, to Irmo for the Midlands RIA meetings or Columbia for another RIA meeting. So it might be a good idea if Blair started a RIA up in Columbia Northeast. Okay. And uh, tentatively speaking, maybe call it the Sand Hills RIA. Now, this is going to be Blair's. Okay. I'm just kind of helping her get it off the ground a little bit. But then after that, what Blair does with it. And I know Blair, she has a high level of integrity. And I know she wants people to learn. Blair, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a Columbia native. I've been here since I was three years old, so I consider it home. Um, I grew up in Blythewood. I'm currently an Elginite. Um, 
I guess as far as real estate, like I've always been in love with real estate when I was, I tell people a joke, like when I was little, other girls were like looking at 17 and teen beat and I had home and garden and Southern living. Um, so I was picking out kitchens and bathrooms since I was like five years old. Um, so I've always loved looking at houses. Um, I was actually first asked to be a real estate agent in 2009 when I was buying a home um, by the agent and the broker that were helping me because I was finding all the houses before they even knew they were listed. Um, and so I don't know if you, you know, for those of you who know a lot about the market, 2009 was a terrible time to be a real estate agent <laughs> um, just because it was, it was a slow time. And, you know, I just gotten, um, I bought a new house and just started my career. So I was like, eh, I just don't think it's a good time. Um, and then, a, you know, a few years later, I guess almost 10 years, 20, yeah, 10, 11 years later, it kind of came back. Um, and, you know, I, I was like, you know what, let's, let's try it out. Let's see it. it I'm a nurse also by license. So it's kind of like my two favorite things, houses and helping people. Um, I've always been into rehab. I had no idea that, like, I thought, H, you know, I saw the shows on HGTV, but I thought, it, oh, that's just a cute little scripted TV show. I had no idea that people actually did this, let alone did it here in Columbia. Um, so I realized, like, I had done it to the, all the houses I had lived in. I bought fixer-uppers because I just don't like the generic builder-grade look. Um, so I was like, well, I don't want to buy a new house because I'll just rip out everything and redo it, so let's get a fixer-upper. So all the houses that I've bought along the way since my first one in 2009, I've rehabbed and sold for more and didn't realize. And someone finally said, you know, like people actually do do that. Um, and so I kind of started to look into it about probably October of 2018 um, and then kind of got serious into finding some education and ended up at the Midlands area and you know, at that point, like a couple months later, I ended up trying to, I went and got my real estate license because I was just like, you know, a lot of people talk about driving for dollars. Um, and I grew up on the northeast side of town, so I was very unaware of all the other neighborhoods. And, you know, um, Columbia is huge. There's so many different areas, so many different neighborhoods. So now while I drive my clients around and I'm getting paid to be their real estate agent when they close on a house, I'm also getting to see and explore the different areas of town um, and also kind of getting to learn like what's what's popular where are the areas that are making changes what are the areas that people are wanting to move to so it's just kind of been a really cool last couple of years for me um, learning this business and just I and I just honestly I love it like I love flipping houses I love the whole process it's just a lot of fun for me so I'm lucky to find something that I really enjoy and it you know it makes me some money so <laughs> Yeah, I noticed you have a, I remember you saying you have a horse also. So I know you like to ride your horse I do. as well. So, okay, uh, maybe one day we'll, we'll take you out to it. My horse is actually all the way in Saluda. So every Sunday morning I trek on over to Saluda and, you know, ride him and give him lots of treats. <laughs> let, me, let me know if you ever hold barrel racing courses. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. No, I chase cows. I'm not a can chaser. I'm a cow chaser. Okay. Okay, gotcha. You know, it's funny you mentioned, because we actually met, if I recall, we actually met at Columbia Rhea at Grecian Gardens, and um, yeah. somebody showed up at one of our meetings, And uh, but anyway, it's great to have you. So, but thank you for coming on, both of you. Um, well, I but, appreciate it. Yes. Well, okay, now, not, now, these questions I have initially, as mentioned, this is very informal, so I hope it's okay if people unmute themselves at will to ask a question if they hear something appropriate. But I'm going to start off by saying, asking, Blair, Eddie, uh, however it may apply, how are you finding your deals now? What, what are some ways you might suggest? Blair, you want to start it off? Yeah, I'll start off. Um, and I'll kind of also say this for the people out there who are still working a nine to five job. Um, not only am I a realtor, not only do I flip houses, I actually still have a regular, we'll, we'll call it a nine to five job. Um, so you can still do this and work full time. Don't let anybody tell you you have to quit your job um, because if you have a family, if you have a house, if you have bills, you need to have some money coming in. Um, so I really rely on wholesalers because I don't really have the time, nor do I really like wholesaling. Um, so I don't have the time to go out and talk to, because with wholesaling, you've got to get out there. You've got to talk to a lot of people. You've got to make a lot of offers and have a lot of time for it. Um, so I, I try to network with a lot of wholesalers, let them know what I'm looking for. 
Um, and I kind of rely on them a little bit more probably than I should, but they do, you know, for the ones that I've worked with, they do an awesome job. And I, I would say as a cash buyer, I don't mind paying a wholesale fee because I know that those wholesalers are out there. They're paying money to advertise. They're working hard. Um, and they give, you know, it's just, they actually are providing a service. Yeah, I was going to say good wholesalers, well worth their weight in gold for sure. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Now I'm on the other end of the spectrum because I used yeah. to go evaluate homes for potential flippers and I ran into one and we decided to form a partnership and uh, he finds them all through the bandit signs and he's got a, uh, he does a lot of cold call. Well, he uses his bandit signs. How was this? He's got some bird dogs out there too. Uh, and I share his name, but he's mine. I'm not sharing his name with him. <laughs> but no, we, we have a good partner. He finds them. You know, he does driving for dollars. I've gone driving for dollars with him. And we'll rack up quite a few numbers. And then he goes back and he finds the owners and does the calls. And, and he's good at it. He spends a lot. And that does take a lot of time. But uh, so it, it's a good partnership for me anyway, because I like remodeling the homes for the flippers but I also like flipping the house myself or even wholesaling it. Okay, well, along those lines then for both of you, what's a good rehab project to you versus one that's not so good? I mean, what do you look for and what do you avoid? Blair, you're good at this. You've got a good eye, Blair. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's really a numbers game. Like, you know, we've, Eddie and I have looked at houses that have holes in the floor and holes in the roof. Um, and I would say like, maybe if it's your first time or your first or second time, maybe don't go with those projects just yet. Um, try to build up. I mean, everyone wants that perfect one that fits the 70% rule and it's just, you know, flooring and paint. Um, but do those come across your desk every day? No. Um, but maybe just start with ones that don't have like huge foundation issues or are falling apart or a fire, say, you know, a fire has happened. Um, you know, start small, start with something that, that literally is cosmetic, but maybe, you know, needs a bathroom, needs a kitchen. Um, and that has a clear title. <laughs> That's always an important thing that, so that you can resell it later. And I tell people when you're, you know, if you're a flipper or a wholesaler, look at it for the in-person, the person that's going to buy the house. Um, that's kind of what I look at and, and, and just, you know, Sometimes you look at the deal and go, is the juice worth the squeeze? You know, if you're going to make $60,000, it might be better to take on a larger project. If you're only going to make, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, then you don't want to take on a major project for that profit. But I would say, like, find numbers that work for you and your, your you know, whatever your program is you've set for yourself. Stick with it, um, and then the good deals will come. Okay, thank you. Eddie, you got any thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I, I oh. think, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, and one more thing, just in case you're not a Columbia native, um, do be aware that after 2015, flood zones kind of became an issue here. Um, so just think about that. There are still people that buy in flood zones on the retail side. They just have to pay additional insurance, but that's kind of one extra thing to, to, to remember in your cap. Yeah, and some, They're a little harder to resell. Yeah, and some some lenders don't like to lend on those either. Correct. So you have to be careful. But uh, I'm with Blair. You know, if, if it's the first time you're going to do a house, I've seen flippers. And I think this is why a lot of them get out of it. A, they buy a house, and they take the word. You got to watch your wholesalers. I hate to say it. Some of them give yeah. you an unrealistic number. On repairs. Yeah, they underestimate repair value. Yeah. So, you know, that's why a lot of people have started using contractors to go. But then again, you better have a knowledgeable contractor and a real contract. There's a lot of contractors out there who aren't contractors. Uh, I'm not trying to bash anyone. I won't mention any names, but you need to just make sure who you're having is qualified to tell you what it's gonna to take to fix that house. If you're walking with a contractor to go look at a wholesale house, and all your contractor do is walk through the house for about 15, 20 minutes, 
he's either that good or he's going to get you in trouble because you really got to look at a house before you can give an accurate number. Uh, I would hate if I ever gave one of my potential clients a number on a flip and I was off. Uh, and to this day, knock on wood, I, I haven't been far from it. Uh, I'm normally right on the money because I will crawl up under the house. I will go on the roof. I mean, we, we on average, what do we spend about two hours at a house? Anybody that's looked at a potential flip with me, we're there an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, by the time you leave, you've you got a rough idea of what the number's going to be like. Okay, well, thank you, Eddie. I appreciate it. Oh, before I forget, uh, folks, every once in a while, check your chat because Christopher Boyd gave his contact information. He's a wholesaler. So every once in a while, check your chat because somebody may have posted some useful information for you. Um, now, how do you finance your rehab projects? Do you use lenders or do you self-fund them? Well, I use lenders. Blair? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I started off using hard money lenders. Um, and just a verbiage difference for anybody that's listening and that's new. There's hard money and there's private money. They're two separate things. Hard money is like from a corporation. Um, we at Aria, I met some people from a company called Lima One. They're a hard money lender. I have used them for my last two flips. Um, had some hiccups with them. It was it was a good process. Thank God for one of the people that worked there. She saved everything last minute. Um, but I have since gone to my next flip is going to be private money and. For private money is basically like people. It's not a bank. It's not a corporation. They're you know people that have money that they want to get in um, and and get some returns on their investment. It could be one person. It could be a group of people. Um, so and I and I do want to say like to the people that are listening to this phone call, there are lenders in this group. I can tell you firsthand experience. If you have a deal and it the numbers make sense, most of them use the seventy percent minus repair rule. Um, post your deal on Midlands Ria. They will contact you. I promise you they're out there. Hey, Blair, along those lines, did Lima One charge you, uh, other than the usual due diligence fees like appraisal and stuff, did Lima One charge you any fee up front before you even got the loan, like several thousand dollars or anything like that? No, they don't do that. Um, there is another company, and I can't remember their name, but they do that. And I would say if, don't ever give anybody money until you go to close. Um, you should not be paying a fee because I've heard other people that have worked with companies like that. They've paid the, you know, it's a one-time fee to set you up and it's like $2,000, $3,000, depending on what kind of line of credit you want. Um, but who's to say they're actually going to lend on your loan? Like I, I know people that have then gone with, you know, decent numbers, like numbers that make sense. And they're like, yeah, well, we're not going to fund this. So they've lost their earnest money. They've still paid this company two or three thousand dollars, and they're still not getting their loan. So I would say, you know, if, if somebody tells you they want money before you go to close, um, and it's not like house specific, like an appraisal or an inspection, yeah, run away. Yeah, I'm, I'm along those lines too. Um, it didn't happen to me, but uh, there's a, a guru named Ron Legrand out there. He paid uh, Kennedy Funding one hundred twenty thousand dollars for a commercial property in Texas and they ended up never funding it. And boy, he was upset, but short story right. is anyone who's going to, any lender who's going to charge you several thousand dollars just for the privilege of sending you a proof of funds letter or tell you that you're going to get a loan or you're able to get a loan from them now after paying that they're not in the lending business. In my opinion, they're in the fees business, the fees collection business. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's, there's too many lenders out there, both hard money lenders and private lenders who aren't going to charge you anything up front until, and, until you actually get the, to get to closing. Okay. So yeah. watch yourselves folks. Um, okay. If I could ask uh, both of you, how do you pre-screen your contractors? How do you make sure they're good versus knuckleheads? Blair? I can tell you how I do my subcontractors, but Blair, how would you do your contract? See, I think if you're going to do flips, this, this is my, my own opinion, uh, and that's all it is. A lot of people don't know much about construction, and this is where there's, there's a trouble spot. 
you're trusting whoever you think is an expert to give you the right advice. But how do you know if it is or isn't? You really don't. So it's a trust issue. What I have found is I go look at my guys. Before my guys, I, I bring them as subs. I've watched them from no less than six months to a year on numerous projects. I go to those projects. I watch what they're doing. I just sit and talk. I get to know them because I don't just want them to do decent work or good work. I want them to be honest. You know, I don't want someone who's on drugs that are getting high, you know, because you see it out there. Uh, <laughs> You have to be careful, uh, and you want to make sure they've got the experience behind them. I know because I can go watch them work, and I know if they're doing it right or wrong. Now, I think, Blair, you've got a pretty good eye. You know when something doesn't look right. But, like, when you're getting into structural, you got to be very careful. Uh, yeah. We work all the time. I've seen GCs make major mistakes on structural, A, because – they don't really understand. It's sad. You can almost get, anybody can almost get licensed today. It, it wasn't like that a, a while back. You know, I'm always kidding you, Bob, about you and me are going to go to Ridgeway, take a three-day class. I'll have you as a GC. Uh, and unfortunately, it's about that easy. You get people who sign for you. There's license lending. There's all kind of illegal activities. Out there. So you have to be careful. But I always tell people, okay, when you ask them, A, can you W-9 them? You want a W-9 because everything you spend on that, you want to be able to write it off. Uh, if they don't want a W-9, you something ain't right, in my opinion. Uh, I always ask them for their insurance information, the certificate of insurance. That certificate in itself is worthless because imagine a car insurance policy. You put a down payment, they give you a policy. However, if you don't make the next month's payment what happens they cancel it but i still have the policy unfortunately some unscrupulous contractors out there do the same thing so i always say call their insurance agent and verify i'm all about verifying this is risk management i'll call and say hey does this individual have insurance their response will be real simple as of today yes he does because if he doesn't pay that month, he won't. Uh, I also verify their licensing status with the LLR. And I've taught people how to go to the LLR licensee lookup and look them up. Uh, see if they've ever had any negative orders against them. Uh, there's a host of things you can do. I see a lot, of, a lot of bad starts and that's where they normally call me. And unfortunately, by the time you call me to come in and see if I can help, A, your budget's gone almost. Uh, a really good contractor, too, doesn't ask for money up front. Uh, if anybody out there has ever hired us, you know we don't ask for money up front. Uh, we don't feel there's a need to because we vet who we work for also. We don't just work for anyone. But we do that to ease you because I don't know how many times I've heard this one. Well, he needed 30% or 50% up front to start the job, and then the job just goes south from there. Uh, you know, why, if you're good at this and you've been doing this a while, why do you need money? You should have accounts everywhere, 30 day, 60 day, 90 day net accounts at all yards, uh, even Lowe's, uh, Schumann Owens, ABC, Steer Supply. I mean, if this is what you do, you have accounts. I, I just had a, a woman call me. It was a labor contract, but the guy required 50% up front. That would have been a red flag in my world. It's a labor contract. She's getting all the materials. I asked her, well, did you not think it's just a labor contract? She didn't think about it. She thought it was standard. No, 50% to me is a red flag on a labor contract. I wouldn't do it. But if you're going to hire subs, make sure, you know, call me, call someone as far as paying them because if you pay them too much money, they'll go somewhere else, I promise you. Uh, good subs don't do that. They don't require 50% up front. They want you to be happy. They like to deliver. Their reputation means more to them than the check. Does that make sense? Yeah, Eddie, along those lines, could you explain this concept of license lending? And is that a problem? Well... It's, it's, it's rampant out there. Here's the issue I have with license lending. 
let's say Blair, you're going to hire, let's, let's make a name of Joe. But Joe isn't qualified, but Joe has a friend named uh, Julie. Well, Julie's a GC. Julie, he will pay, Joe will pay Julie X amount of dollars and she'll pull the permits for your job. Now, is that a problem? It can be. Because uh, if something goes south, who's going to be liable? That's the first issue. Because you're making the checks out normally to Joe, not Julie. Uh, it, I've seen it go south. At the end of the day, you, the client, are the one that ends up suffering. I see it all the time. So license lending, if you, why are you license lending? It's illegal. See, here's my thought on it. If your contractor, subcontractor, anybody is doing something illegal and you're witnessing it, okay, why would you trust this person? That's my point of view. Okay, I see specialty contractors, like say a flooring contractor or somebody hiring subs under them. Is that allowed? Specialty contractors cannot hire anybody. And okay. uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize a specialty contract, if he does have a specialty license, which means, you know, there, there's a few fields in there, sheetrock, paint, you know, frame and stuff. They're, they're specialty license. You have to, if the job is over $5,000, they have to have a surety bond. And the reason behind that is, this is why you want them bonded. If they screw up the job and leave you, you know, at your wits in, you go to the LLR, that bond kicks in and pays to finish it. You follow me? The bond is a good thing to have on your contractor. Okay, Eddie, let's say you get Eddie and Blair. How, let's say you get competent contractors on your projects. How do you make sure they do the work correctly instead of payments to them? Well, for example, Eddie, you know the house I'm in now in Lexington, okay? Yes. I mean, I, I couldn't keep an eye on the guys. And you remember the termites that came flying into my bathroom? Yep. After the sheetrock was up and everything? Yep. Okay. I couldn't have seen that as a layperson, okay? How do I make sure these guys are doing the job right, especially if I can't be there all, all the time to babysit them? Okay. I t I'll give an example. Me and Bree went to look at a job today. Uh, and Bree's already to the point where she's understanding, you know, the critical path method, the one I like to use. This house was all out of order. She saw it. She says, Eddie, this shouldn't have been done. You know, it, it, you learn it. You know, and this is where I, anything in this business is, is about building relationships. Uh, just like I have relationships with my subs. If you got a good contract and you hold on to them, don't nickel and dime them, you'll lose them. Uh, good contractors, good subcontractors, uh, not, not that we're trying to sound arrogant or anything like that, but, you know, we, we can pick and choose our work. Uh, we have to turn down work. So, you know, I've had people, you know, they say, oh, so-and-so said they can do it for 25 cents per square foot less. Go ahead, hire them. Well, then there's a problem. Then they come back. By that point, you know, I'm busy. Uh, you know, you, you got to think about, I like to look at it as a win-win. Blair will tell you, I always tell Blair, I want to make sure you're, you're doing good. We're on board. Uh, I'm always checking, right. I'm always communicating, because I always tell, I want to make sure you make money on this. That is my main concern. And anybody I've ever worked for, flipped out, that's what I'm trying to tell them. I'm trying to keep money in their pocket. And this is where it's a trust thing. You got to trust me. The, we don't need to do that. We can do this and it'll work, you know? Okay, Kristen just yeah, posted some. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, Blair. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, unfortunately, not everybody can be on the job site every day. And so part of that is finding that team um, that you know you can trust. Like I use Eddie, I know I can trust him. He sends me pictures of things. We talk, you know, through a project. If stuff comes up, he calls me. Um, you shouldn't have to like walk on a site and have your contractor, you know, you notice something and the contractor's like, oh yeah, like last Thursday, you know, we noticed that there was a leak, but we just put the drywall up anyway. Um, that's kind of a red flag, but you know, unfortunately sometimes you have to make semi or expensive mistakes to find that a house. Um, the first house I did, I, I hired somebody, they were licensed, they were bonded and insured. 
Um, they had pictures of their work. I, they were actually recommended by several people. Um, and they did not do a good job. Um, so I ended up having to hire someone else to come and, and clean it up and finish what they didn't do right. Um, but now I know. And so sometimes, unfortunately, there is a learning curve. Um, and so sometimes, like with this rear group, what's good too, and, you know, I'll kind of jump ahead a little bit, Bob, but like I have one that's a house that we're getting ready to start on. And I always tell people all the time, like, if you want to, like, call me, we can walk through. I'll show you, like, what, you know, we, you know, different stages. Um, you know, and there's a lot of people in this group that are like that. Like, there's plenty of learning opportunities. And that's some of it is you just, you have to get off the couch and go touch it, see it, feel it, look at it, walk through it, um, so that you can start recognizing stuff that looks wrong, that isn't, isn't good. Um, and then as far as with like contractors too, they should allow you to see their work. Um, so that's something that I'll do sometimes if I'm looking at people, I'll be like, you know, well, can you show me a project you're working on? Um, people can alter pictures in case you didn't know. Um, <laughs> so sometimes somebody will send you a portfolio and it looks great. The pictures look awesome. Um, but then you go to the job and you're like, well, you know, they, they just didn't do things correctly. Um, like flooring, we, Eddie and I came across the house that looked great. The floors, they just put new floors in, um, but they put them in all wrong. So that would have been like, you know, seven or $8,000 to replace all those floors that somebody put in incorrectly. Um, so just like kind of picking up on that kind of stuff helps out. Um, eh. Okay. Along those lines, Blair, okay. As an investor, and Eddie, this applies to you too, if you could answer from your point of view also. Okay, for a major rehab, now I have a, one of my early rehab gurus is actually down in Ocala, Florida. She believes that the investor should hire individually the, the one prime contractor, the main person, then individually hire the HVAC person, the subcontractor, the plumbing subcontractor, the electrical subcontractor, the roofer and basically seven different people. Okay. Um, should the investor hire each subcontractor like that? Or should the subs be hired by one prime who should be managed by the investor? Um, I think that's an, it's an individual decision. Um, if it's your first time, you, know, you have to be honest with yourself about what you do and do not know. If you come in with arrogance and you're, Oh, I know what I'm doing. Um, you may do great. Fine. Absolutely. You may know exactly what you're doing, but if you don't, it's going to get really expensive real fast. Um, so if it's like, if you know, you don't know anything about construction at all, it's your first time, I would say rely on your GC. Um, you know, you're going to have to build relationships with people. Now, if you're comfortable with managing different projects, so there's a lot of project management too. You have to know like which order things should be done in. Um, because you know, if you do plumbing, or you put up drywall before you have the plumber come in, then they have to tear the drywall out, fix the plumbing. Um, you know, then you're kind of just running in circles. So it, your guru may have some control issues. I don't know. That's a different, different conversation for my, you know, my previous bachelor's in psychology. Um, but it, I think it, it just varies by what you're comfortable with. Um, you know, or if you have it and what you want too. some people want to be fully involved and touch everything. And some people really are just like, I just want to cash the check at the end. Here's my GC. You take care of everything and let me know when we're done. Yeah. One problem I see, uh, Eddie talks about the critical path method. One, one problem I see if you're right. having each individual sub is you're going to get it out of sequence and kind of make yeah. a mess. So that's there what is, I'd be worried there about. Is yeah, so, so it's, I would, Go ahead, Blair. Oh, sorry, Eddie. I was, I was just going to say, yeah, I would say, you know, unless you know, you know, you've done a bunch or a few and you know that like the critical path or you know like a way that logically makes sense and you have a relationship with contractors because here's another thing. Hiring a GC is probably going to get you, even though you pay them a fee, you know, or percentage or however they do it, they are usually going to get a better deal calling a sub than you would individually because the sub knows them, the sub knows that they're going to get paid, the sub knows that contractor's not going to bring them on a, on a bad job. Um, and because usually the, con like, Contractors have their sets of subs, um, and, and they're and they're working with them often, so they're bringing them business. So, like if I call, you know, the painter, he may tell me four thousand, but he'll tell, you know, the contractor, let's say Eddie, twenty five hundred. 
So there is a value to knowing like that your GC probably has a better relationship with the sub. So that's something to think about too. Like sometimes paying that GC that whatever, you know, per week or per cent or whatever you guys have worked out, um, you're actually going to save money in the end. And not only that, subs, I've seen people get intimidated into paying workers, you know, contractors, even though yeah. they felt that they weren't that far along. And I said, well, why did you pay them? They're like, well, they were kind of pushy and I wanted them to finish it. If you want them to finish it, my response would have been don't pay them. Uh, and so right. no to come back. But having a GC too, well, you know, if you can't say no and you're worried about, oh, if you tell them no, if you're worried about telling them no because you think they're, they're not where they should be, then maybe you want to get a GC. Because dealing with contractors can be a little tricky. And if you got to get rid of one, do you know where to get another one right on the spot in an emergency? Uh, so I don't know. I think I think a good and I'm I'm biased now because that's what I basically do. I'm a licensed builder, but same thing as the GC. Basically, we we control. We can we get the sub. We do this. Order the materials. We free you up to do what you do. You find them. Let me worry about getting them flipped. Uh, you know you're always involved in the process, Blair. Uh, yeah. And we, I, I love working with Blair. Uh, she's got the right attitude. She's never seemed stressed out. If she ever is stressed, I can't see it. Uh, and we have a lot of fun. It, it should be fun. You know, if you're working with a contractor and you're banging heads and it's not working, you might want to, the relationship ain't going to last. No. Okay, now, this, this is actually more towards geared towards Blair, this question. But, Eddie, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, as you mentioned, Blair, you don't have to do this full time to rehab houses successfully. You can still hold a, a regular job and whatnot. Now, during the rehab process, how often do you check on your contractors or how often do you recommend you check on them? Um, I mean, if it's somebody you're first starting out with, I, you know, I would check pretty regularly just to make sure, you know, and you can, and you can go after, like, they don't have to be there. In fact, sometimes it's good to go, like, when they're not there. Um, cause they might, you know, divert you to look at other things and, and just take your time and look at the job that's being done. Um, again, it's a comfort level. Some people are, have, you know, they want to be in control or they want to look or if they're just nervous Nancy's and they, and whatever is comfortable for you. Um, I probably go like once a week or if somebody calls me and, you know, if Eddie calls me, he's like, you know, I need you to look at this or what do you want to do about this? Um, you know, or you, you schedule a time, hey, every Thursday, I need an update. They, with all the technology we have now, I mean, you have GoPro cameras, you have Facebook Messenger with, you know, so they can walk you through the project. And um, I mean, they should never tell you now either. Like they shouldn't be like, you know, they may be like, I'm busy, can I, can I call you later? Sure, yes, I get that you're busy, but they should never be like, you know, no, I can't be bothered. You're, cause you're their customer, you're doing a job, you know, they're doing a job. Uh, they should be open to showing you what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, but I know people who, you know, who do have a good relationship with a GC and they live in other states. Right? They don't ever see the property. Um, so that's, and that's kind of one of those things that you'd have to probably develop what you feel comfortable with. I would say, though, like, don't be there every day, all day, like, talking <laughs> to them either. Like, let them work. Um, but sometimes you can... <laughs> Sometimes you can really aggravate them and they won't come work for you anymore. Because mm -hmm. if you're there pointing out like what, well, you know, they need to do this or you need to do that or, you know, it, you know, you do, you do have to at least try to trust them a little bit to do a good job or else you probably shouldn't have hired that person in the first place. But, um, but I mean, I would say like once a week, I mean, it, it depends on the scope of the work too. I mean, so, sometimes nothing happens for three or four days. So, you know, I look at my, the schedule, you know, we sit down and we, and we do kind of a rough schedule of, of when things should be happening. Um, and if they get bumped back or something doesn't happen, you know, your contractor should keep you abreast of the situation. And, you know, you can decide, do you want to do that by email, by phone call, um, in-person visits? Like, and sometimes, it's, you know, you can drop by too. Um, sometimes, you know, an unannounced drop by is good as well to make sure they're not just sitting around eating sandwiches. It's funny you mentioned that, Blair, because uh, Eddie's done several jobs for me, and uh, every time I ask him, hey, is there anything I can do? He says, his standard reply is, yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out of the way. Like, um, 
Yeah, I mean, sometimes that's the best. It, honestly, it's the best thing. Just get out of the way and let them do their job. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, it's kind of a, an ambiguous answer. I apologize. But, you know, sometimes you just have to kind of feel out the situation. And then, again, it's what you're comfortable with, you know, and because, you know, sometimes if you're putting in a significant amount of your money, you know, you want to make sure you're, you're looking at it, seeing it, making sure it's getting done. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Something Blair said that, that I tell people all the time, she hit the nail on the head. You're their customer. You're their boss. You're the boss. You write the check. They should be willing to talk to you whenever you call them. They should treat you with that respect, too, because you write the check. They're working for you. I work for Blair, technically. So I can't even imagine me telling them, I ain't got time to talk to you. You know, that would be, I'd get fired anywhere else. If one of my subs told me that, I'd find out. If they say, uh, can I call you back in 20 minutes? I'm kind of in the middle of doing something. That's fine. But remember, you write the check, you're in charge, you're the boss. You, you at the end of the day, should be controlling the job. I'm, I like to consider myself, I'm there to help you get through this as painless as possible. Well, thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Blair. Um, now, if I could skip ahead, let's say you get, you successfully hire a good, a good set of contractors. They do the house the way you want it and whatnot, okay? Now, Blair, you have a little bit of an advantage over us mere mortals. You have a <laughs> real estate license and are a realtor. Um, how, do you, yeah. how do you sell your finished rehabs? And I'd like to hear it from both your perspective as well as from a non-realtor like Eddie as a contractor. Um, I, I mean, I sell mine on the market on the MLS. Um, and if you're new to the area or, or haven't heard, the Columbia market is ridiculously hot right now. Um, somehow we've been voted one of the top 10 cities in the country to move to. Um, so right now, probably for every one house on the market, there are 30 to 40 buyers looking to buy. So we don't have enough houses on the market. And the MLS is um, basically to describe it. It's just a, a place where realtors go and they can put their information and it gets thrown out to all the other programs like Zillow. And the MLS, in, honestly, is just a data collection center. And they'll tell you we're a data collection program. Um, and they, they send out the data and Zillow mines it, Realtor, you know, all those different places. Um, so everybody can see it. And, and pretty much a lot of times now people are looking for houses on their, the phone is the most popular. Um, and then the computer and then like kind of drive neighborhood is kind of the, the last data that they've done for collecting on how people look at home. Okay. Just a little plug for Blair now. Uh, Blair is a, uh real estate agent and realtor with EXP Realty, which has kind of a network marketing type structure, if you will. And my license has been inactive since, oh, wow, 2009 or something like that. Some ridiculously long time. And I actually tempted to reactivate my license under Blair. So if anyone has a license or is thinking of getting a license, talk to Blair first. Okay, I'm sure she can give you some really good guidance. Um, yeah, be happy to. Okay, Eddie, how about yourself? Are you an MLS kind of guy? Uh, I, I did my first flip uh, in December, and I listed it. Uh, I do for sale by owner, and I probably will always do for sale by owner. I protect realtors if they want to bring a client. But uh, I just kind of like to do everything myself and kind of keep more of my money. Okay, well... Absolutely. There's, uh, there's benefits to both sides. Um, now, do either of you know of any buyer's assistance programs to help with down payments or other sources of long-term funding, maybe federal, state, or local programs? Blair? Yeah, I mean, there are quite a few, and they vary throughout the year. Um, sometimes there's federal programs that will release, like, a large sum in January, um, and it's kind of like South Carolina Housing Association has some. There's a lot for first-time home buyers um, or single home buyers. But there, you know, there are. Every program has stipulations. Um, some of them you have to live there for a year. Some of them you have to live there alone for five years. Um, there are there are options out there, but they do kind of vary month to month or sometimes week to week, depending on if the funds are available or not. Hey, Blair, Kristen is asking uh, by chat, is EXP virtual? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to answer her right now. Yeah, I mean, it pretty much is virtual. We do have offices. Um, there's an office in Columbia, Greenville, Charlotte, 
just the local ones. Um, but one of the things I like about it is I, that I can work from anywhere. Um, it's all of we all of our documents are loaded online. Um, you don't have to like turn anything into the office. I get paid direct deposit. I don't ever even see the check. The attorney's office overnights it to EXP. And they put it in my account the next day. Okay. Um, okay. With regards back to the buyer's assistance thing. Eddie mentioned NACA. I don't even know what that is. I've heard of it, but I don't know what they do or what they are. Um, it's not something I've really delved into, but from what I've heard from other agents, it takes a long time. So be prepared right. to wait. Okay. Yeah. yeah. NACA is more geared up, I think, for you go, this is for people who have, uh, they make you go through these classes for home ownership. Uh, and they're trying to get people who otherwise couldn't afford to buy a house. They kind of already have the money in hand, but there's a lot of rules. I wouldn't recommend NACA for a flip though. No, 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 no. Yeah, a lot of your assistance programs aren't gonna be for flip flip buyers. Okay, well. Because they have, they have a lot of stipulations. Like I had a client who got down payment assistance um, but he had to be the only person living in the home for five years. Um, and then I've had other people that have gotten assistance programs. Um, and you have to, you have to, ver you have to be owner occupied or you have to at least be owner occupied for one to two years. Um, so, you know, they're great for like your re for retail buyers or, and you know, if you yourself want to buy a home, there are programs out there. Um, there are some great lenders in town, like VA does zero down payment. Um, there's a lot of lenders in town with no fees. Um, but as far as for flips, I'd probably say there's mm, probably not too many. There is that, um, oh gosh, what is it, the 201K? Uh, is that what it's called? Yeah, where you can, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, but I've had a couple lenders tell me to be careful with those because you have to set a very specific timeline and if you don't meet your timeline, they can actually repossess the house. So I don't know how accurate that is. That's what I've been told from a lender that I know that she knows her stuff. So I'd expect she knew what she was talking about. Um, but those are just kind of a loan where you can buy a house um, that needs fixing up. They give you the money ahead to fix it up. And then you actually close once it's fixed up. Now, and now, they have a specific list of contractors too. That's right, you have to be qualified. Anybody out there happen to be qualified for a 201K loan? Blair, for you too, if you ever have someone that finds a house they want, I'm qualified. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, some of those work out, but you got a six month window to do it. Yeah. And on the bigger rehabs for the for the 201K loans, I think it's 203, is it 203? 203K loans? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. They, they have a consultant if it's over $30,000 and he controls everything. He's Eddie, like the guy that comes around from the bank and yeah, Bob. Eddie, Eddie Norm, Norman Davis is asking advice on contractors for the 203K FHA. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I'm not sure what he, David Sobby, I can, I can put him in touch with a guy that handles that. Okay, is that, wow, is that adequate, Norman? I hope that's an answer. I think he just wants some, you know, he can call me later. I mean, my number's up there. If you want to call me tomorrow, Norman, just give me a call. Uh, I have a gentleman, David Sobby. He works with different banks and mortgage companies for the 203K loans. Uh, and he can answer any all questions if you have questions about that. Yeah, and Norman, they should give you a list too. Like they'll give you a list of the people that are approved, the approved contractors, the lender will. Yeah, they screen them. And if they're not on that list, they you got to hire from the list. Yeah. But you have to live in that thing. You can't flip that house. Yeah. That's not for flipping purposes. Okay, that's what you were looking for, Norman. Yeah, that's only for purchase and owner occupied. Ah, interesting. 
Okay. Okay. Well, um, does anyone else have questions? Uh, that, that pretty much exhausts my list of questions for Eddie and Blair. Does anyone else have questions that they want to ask? Please feel free to unmute yourself or put in the chat. You may have very well answered every question that everyone needs to know how to rehab and resell a project. So, um, hello. Yes. Hey, this is Derek. Um, Derek Jones here. Question. Um, Blair brought up something. She mentioned that um, um, pretty much that uh, the the market here um, was listed as being in the top ten around the country as far as moving to. Um, how has that affected the inventory as far as people who are trying to flip right now? Um, I mean, it's a competitive market, um, but as to coin my man, Vanilla Ice, you have to get in where you fit in. Um, so some, so depending on what your numbers are, some people can buy houses at different prices or they have different rehab prices. Um, so, but I mean, I've, they're, they're out there. Um, and then also with, you know, unfortunately with COVID and stuff that there are some people who are trying to get rid of houses. And as that progresses and as the economy kind of dwindles down a little bit, I foresee that investing will pick up a lot um, as far as especially creative financing. Um, but for some reason, we have not seen a downturn in the retail market at all. In fact, it has only gone up. Um, even the, the median house price in Columbia in the last year has jumped $20,000 higher. So, I mean, there are deals out there and you have to figure out what deals work for you. Um, and like I said, like sometimes, you know, we'll all go to a showing and 50 people might show up. Three of them might actually only be the people that are actually cash buyers. There are a lot of people too that, you know, just never pull the trigger, but they show up for every, every event. Um, like Bob said, I mean, you know, or the percentages, the Midlands RIA has a higher percentage with, you know, 3% of people who actually get into this or want to get into this or try to get into this actually do a deal. Um, so don't be intimidated um, because again, you might show up to a property and, you know, my rehab numbers might be higher than yours. So you can make a better offer than I can. I'm going to stick with my numbers, but you have to get out there and make offers. Um, and I tell people, you got you to gotta kiss a lot of frogs. Um, but I mean, there, there are deals out there to be had and Columbia is a huge market. Um, you know, and right now there, you know, there's a lot of people that are aging. Um, and you know, there's people that bought the houses in the sixties and seventies and grandma never touched it. I mean, the, the baby boomer market is, you know, they're, they're aging up and going to assisted living, um, or nursing homes. So there's a lot of those that are out on the market. So there are, there are deals out there. Don't be intimidated by the number of people who are at meetings or the number of people who are looking. Um, you know, th there's, there's deals to be had. Hey, Eddie, Gal Thanks. was asking, oh, I'm sorry, Eddie, were you going to answer something about that? Uh, reading it, Eddie, given your business, can you recommend other contracts that you know are reliable and know what they're doing? I have to uh, Gallo, here's the problem. Most I know maybe two, three, you know, we're small circles in this area. Uh, and I know the ones that I know are that are good and reliable, they're booked up too. Uh, now that doesn't mean they can't get in or, you know, we can't work you in because you can safely handle as many flips as you think you can. Me as a contract, I won't do more than two at a time because they're, they're going stages. You know, let's say Blair's starting hers. Well, we're going to start this. Once my guys are done there with that, we can move them to the next one and so on. So, uh, and it's, it's not just that, you know, we're always busy. Everybody's busy in this business. Uh, but there's all saying, you know, if everything's right and the stars align, you know, we can make time. We can, we can work if we're giving advance notice. Somebody calls me up and says, hey, uh, I already closed on this. I'm already behind. Uh, can you start tomorrow? That's a definite no-no. There's no way. You're looking, uh, any good contractor is two to three weeks out from even being able to talk to you. Does that help you? Guys? Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, and kind of to add to that, Eddie, like don't wait till you close on a house to start talking to people either. Um, you know, like when I put a house under contract, I know I've got however much time before we close. Like I already have people, the house I close on at the end of September, I've already got quotes going now. Um, so I've already called people, hey, you know, come out. So the more, the more advanced, you know, warning you can give people, the usually the more they can squeeze you into their schedule somewhere. Um, and again, I'm going to kind of preface this if you cannot, I, I use a phrase, I've had it around for forever, it's called monitor and adjust. Um, if you have to have everything in perfect order all the time, and a timeline, this business may not be for you. Um, sometimes you, you know, you do have to, if the roofer can't be here to, today, you know, I try to figure out, you know, well, who, who can be here today and switch out and, and kind of move people around. Um, but usually, like, you know, if you tell your contractor what you're doing and what's going on, you know, like I said, and also that's kind of where Eddie said earlier, if you didn't hear him, don't nickel and dime people either because um, they're less likely to come, to come to your job if you're trying to still debate with them about price or bring the price of their work down. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. But there, are, right. there are a lot of good people in this area. There are. Yeah, and see, and a, and a good contract, good work, and good anybody. I, I'm just going to uh, jump off of what you said, uh, Blair. The nickel and diming is why people can't hold good contractors. Uh, you know, I know some of these gurus try to tell you, oh, go squeeze them down to this. There is enough money in these things if done right. It's a win-win all the way around, even the end buyer, you know. We always want to make sure the end buyer has a good product. You know, Blair's real good on that. Everybody I've ever worked for is good on that. So it, it should be a win, win, win all the way around, you know. Uh, but if you nickel and dime a good contractor, he'll know right off the gate. I've gone to these, meet with these flippers, and the minute they start saying use project source for this, I want to cut the budget here. And I'm thinking, you know what, this ain't going to work. Because there's always going to be stuff you don't see. It's going to happen. Uh, and working with cheap products is harder than working with good products. I promise you. Along the lines of nickel and diming, um, what about the, the knuckleheads who masquerade as contractors, but they overcharge? I think Andy Holland knows, he told me of one, who overcharge and you... You know, I mean, you're being generous with a guy. How do you get, how do you, how do you weed those guys out who are overcharged and they're really not qualified? Eddie, can I tell a story real quick? Sure. So this is another way to, and it's also another way to verify if they're good or not. I had a contractor come in to bid on a job and he did, you know, kind of what Eddie mentioned, he walked around, you know, took one or two pictures with his phone, didn't write anything down. Um, a few weeks, you know, a few weeks later, I'm still having to, to go after him to ask him for a quote. He just sends me one flat price. Um, so your contractor should be able to send you like an itemized type list of what things should cost and then and labor. Go to Lowe's or go to Home Depot. I mean, these places are open. If you go and you're seeing like, you know, oh, faucets are like 90 to $100, but he's charging you $500. Um, you'll kind of learn what labor costs are as you go. And you can ask your contractor flat out, like, what do you charge per hour, per project, per, you know, or if they, some contractors charge you like a percentage of the total value of the, the material. Um, but so that's kind of a way that you can look at if they're overcharging you or, you know, ask, you know, yeah, I'm going to kind of tell you, like, just kind of look at what materials and, and I kind of keep a habit of that. I'll go through Lowe's every once in a while and look at what's the cost of lumber what are the cost of, you know, bits and pieces? And you can kind of keep in your head, okay, you know, like, yeah, with COVID, some, a lot of the prices have gone up because, uh, you know, they just can't manufacture it fast enough because some of the factories are closed. Um, but you can kind of use that to see what prices and see if they're, they should be able to give you a list of what they're doing for the money they're charging you to, to I guess, what's the word? I, any, I'm trying to find a word and I can't. Um, Anyway, they should be able to give you a list of what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to look through this manual I have here. There's, there's knowing what current labor prices are work for you. RS means 
has a good system out there. It's not 100% foolproof, and it, you have to adjust it for different areas. And uh, you take a gentleman remodeling, which is basically flipping. Inexperienced contractors work in new construction is what we like to say because it's easy to build a house from the ground up. There's no surprises. There's no figuring anything out. When you get into remodeling, it's a different little area and you got to start figuring out, you know, okay, what's it going to take? What, what, is, what does this sub get paid an hour? Even I have to be up with prices on, uh, let's say roofing. Roofing goes per square. They charge you per square. Siding is per square. Now, if I don't know the going prices from low to high, I can't negotiate very well. So, you know, that's part of, of knowing what the current prices are, and you got to be out there in the market. Uh, that, that's a tricky one, but you'll know when you, when, after a few flips, you'll know when you're getting charged too much. Most people tell me, I thought he was charging me too much right off the beginning, but they didn't want to say anything. If you think you're being charged too much, you can just stop that guy. You're not a block. You don't have to. You don't have to continue with this guy. You can say, "No, let me. I'm gonna check somebody else." And you have that right. And I would recommend that because most people tell me, "I thought he was charging me too much." And my next question: Well, then why did you let him do it? She goes, "I don't know." Some people are just afraid uh, afraid of confrontation, or there shouldn't be a confrontation. You're the boss. Tell him to kick rocks. Kristen's asking, what's the knucklehead's name? I'll tell you later, Kristen. Uh, Gallo's saying, always get more than one quote. I agree. Adrian says, there are three factors, price, quality, and speed for every job. You can get only two of those three, so decide which two are most important to you and be prepared to compromise on the third. For example, if you want good quality and fast work, be prepared to pay more. Hmm, that makes sense. Well, uh I'll tell you what you don't want to do either. Call your contractor 10 times a day. I'm going to just put that out there. Because I, got, I got one person, and they're not on, thank goodness. But they call probably five, six times a day. Realize we're working. You don't have to leave me 10 messages. You don't have to leave your contractor 10 messages. You just leave him one message, he should call you back. Uh, because you can, you can wear your contractor out where he don't have time and he'll just tell you to find somebody else or he'll just finish that one job. You'll lose a good contractor. You want to hold on to a good contractor. That's what, and I'm a contractor, so I might be by saying that. Hey, uh, Eddie, Eddie or Blair, either one, have uh, another thing that I had experienced early on in my uh, early rental <laughs> life was beware of the contractor who also, and this may be true or you all can verify this, who knows how to start a job so that you can't get somebody else to complete it. <laughs> yeah. Here, here's a problem with it. You're right. Uh, me and Bree went to look at a job today and you know, the way it was done, you almost have to go back to square one. Uh, because the, the wiring, the, the, nothing was labeled. I don't even think he knows unless he wrote it down. I don't know how he did it. But uh, there are people out there that start it and they'll try to hold it. Uh, a lot of contractors just want to get it, the job started to and then hold you until they can get to you. You have to be careful with that. There's a lot of tricks out there. You're right. Uh, it's sad for the client because, you know, I come, I, I go to work for some people. They're already got a bad taste in their mouth from the last contractor. That's the hardest client for me because they've already been burned. They've already had a hard time. Sometimes it's the contractor's fault. Sometimes it's the client's fault. Uh, but like I said, you know, everybody's got to enjoy working together. This is a relationship. Uh, you know, it's a win-win, and if you can do the win-win, and everybody, and he's got to be up front. I think if I've ever had a surprise or anything come up out of the uh, normal at Blair's, one of Blair's jobs, I'll call and say, hey, we got a small issue here. Uh, and then I just surprise her of it. But I, I like to keep anybody I'm working with 
pretty much up to speed on what's going on on their job. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the answer, both of you. Um, are there any other questions from anyone out there by chat or just unmute yourself? You know, Blair, Eddie, I think we may have answered every question. So now everyone's a, an expert at rehabbing houses. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, now, before we end the interview and the meeting, are there any last tips for us, especially for the newer house flippers? You go first, Blair, ladies first. <laughs> um, you know, I would say just um, understand that this group is a resource. Like Bob said, it's a library. Um, we also do a lot of facilitating. Um, like I'll be sending stuff to Bob. I'm always happy to talk with people. I don't know everything, but I can definitely share with you what I've done, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out. Um, you know, when we offer stuff like walkthroughs for houses, you know, come to those. Like I said, you got you got to get off the couch and you got to you got to go do and touch. Um, you know, same with wholesalers and your offers. Like offers don't just fall out of the sky. You got to go out there. You got to go make offers. You got to go talk to people. You got to meet people. Um, you know, the house that I'm doing, I'm happy to. If anybody wants to walk through the different phases, you know, come by and see what we're doing. Ask questions. I'll be happy to answer anything for you. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. You know. Uh, I guess that's about right. You know, the first house, make sure it's a house you feel comfortable with in the beginning. Uh, make sure your numbers are on point. Uh, that's important. If you start out with the wrong number, you're going to have a problem. This is where, like, the RIA helps you, too. Okay, thank you. Uh, James is saying, what's the best way to reach out? James, if you can hear me, uh, you see the, uh, you see down there, the, the, there's the contact information for Eddie and Blair. Derek is asking, is there any recommended reading or the best place to start for new rehabbers? Any remodeling books are good to have. I'm going to tell you why. It gives you an idea of the amount of work that goes into stuff. YouTube has a lot of good, uh, uh, Trade magazine. I like these J, uh, journal like construction, uh, this old house. You know, there's all kinds of ideas, and they actually talk pricing in there. Uh, and the RIA, I think the RIA is, is a great place to talk to people who have done it. You know, there's a lot of people in the RIA who have a lot of experience and can help you, and they don't mind sharing. You know, they're not afraid to be, you know, share what works for them. And that's what I love about this RIA. People will easily tell you, readily tell you, this is what's worked for me in the past year. Try this. Okay, well, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Does, uh, does anyone else have any last questions before we adjourn for the night? Eddie Blair, I think we may have exhausted everything now. So um, anyway, thank you both for coming on. Uh, you've been awesome. You continue to be awesome. And I look forward to seeing how your rehab goes on Rosewood. In fact, if it's okay, Blair, as I mentioned before, yeah. we can schedule, if it's okay to schedule a workshop or two out on your property as you're rehabbing it. Absolutely. That'd be a good idea to have a. Yeah. A pre like I said, I'd like to. Yeah. I'm sorry, Eddie. No, have a pre and then a mid, and then a final. Yeah, ab yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was going to say, you know, I mentioned it to Bob, and I was going to talk to you about it later. But since we're all on the phone, <laughs> um, yeah, Bob, if you and I want to get together, we can schedule. Um, I can tell you, like, when we're closing on it, and, well, I guess you know. Um, and then, you know, we could do, like, the weekend after that or close after that, do a pre-walkthrough. Um, like, Eddie was really great when he did his over on Valhalla. He let, you know, people walk through and do an estimate of repairs on their own. And then he walked through and kind of went through everything. And I thought that was such a great experience um, to have him to do that. Because um, I, I learned a lot, and he gives a lot of great information and great numbers. And I'd be happy to host one of those at the Rosewood property. Okay. Thank you, Blair. Thank you, Eddie. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being on. And, um, Gallo, absolutely. Let's hit lunch sometime, okay? I know we keep saying that. Let's hit it this time, okay? Um, but
but yeah okay well, well thanks again eddie and blair i appreciate it uh everyone you're welcome i appreciate everyone's attendance and uh everyone have a great evening and well start cutting deals all right good night good night bye